Hello and welcome to Dash Talk. Today I have with me the co-founder and COO of Hummingbot, who is Carlo P. Las Marias. Carlo, how are you? Hi, I'm fine, thanks. Nice to be on here. It's great to have you, uh, particularly because Hummingbot is a Dash Fast Pass partner. And so let's jump right in to the product offerings that you have at Hummingbot. Carlo, I understand that it's like a two-fold dual product offering. Please tell us about that. Sure, so we have two products as you mentioned. So the first one is Hummingbot, which is an open source trading bot. So it basically allows anyone to trade using algorithmic automated trading strategies. So that's open source. Um, so uh, anyone can download it and use it right out of the box. And we've also made it so that's very developer friendly so that folks can customize it um, if they want to create their own scripts or modify the code, uh, they can. Oh, wow. um, and then the kind of second project that we're working on is it's, it's, it's related, but it's separate. So we created Hummingbot Miners, which is our liquidity mining platform. Um, and also to take a step back, we actually wrote the original white paper on liquidity mining and coined the term, although over you the past month- You coined the term liquidity mining? Yeah, so we wrote that in our white paper um, wow. back in back last year, 2019. Um, although obviously it's been popularized lately in DeFi, um, but the general principle within our liquidity mining and in, in, in DeFi is the same. It's kind of how can we compensate and incentivize market makers for providing liquidity for tokens? Uh, so while the likes of Uniswap, Balancer, and Curve uh, do this with market maker smart contracts. Our platform does this on centralized exchanges. So it's in, in the more traditional form form of trading. So then how many exchanges uh, is Hummingbot compatible with? So right now we're integrated with 18 exchanges. So, um, and they're both centralized and decentralized. So we have oh, wow. 14 uh, centralized exchanges and then four decentralized exchanges. And we have, we've been really promoting the open source community. So we have several folks in the community who have been contributing connectors and we're also continuing to build out. So it's our, it's our goal to eventually cover as many of the exchanges out there as possible. Um, but we, we're, making, we're making sure like that that they're, they're done in a really uh, uh, efficiently and work really well. So that's why we're incrementally adding them as we go. Okay. So then um, how long has Hummingbot been around? Sure. So we basically started out in 2017. So we, we co-founded uh, the company. We Originally started out as a quant hedge fund, so we were using uh, machine learning to making make uh, buying and selling decisions and trade in and out of Bitcoin and Ethereum. And at the time, it's kind of developed into Hummingbot because uh, we saw that there was really a big problem with market infrastructure, which uh, us and uh, as well as a lot of our folks in the uh, crypto fund community were, were grappling with. Uh, we saw that 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 was a big problem, and also. Uh, one big problem we saw that is, the, is liquidity in the general crypto markets. Uh, so we, we knew a lot of uh, traders are also token issuers and exchanges uh, having problems with just a lack of liquidity. Um, and this is a problem that persists to today. So what we decided to do is really focus more on the technology side. Mm -hmm. And that's how we kind of developed uh, Hummingbot. So we, we started building out the, the infrastructure a bit more. And we thought that the best way to really make a big impact on adjusting liquidity in the markets was, is to open source it and to decentralize it. So by allowing the, the whole market to basically help with solve the problem of liquidity, we would make a bigger impact uh, uh, than, than if we were just doing it ourselves. Got it. So then what are y'all's backgrounds, you and your co-founders? Sure, so our four co-founders, uh, two of us, uh, we came from Wall Street industry. So basically we had between the, uh, the uh, so Mike, our CEO and myself, uh, mm -hmm. we have collectively 22 years of experience in, in, in the financial markets, traditional financial markets. So he was trading and structuring CDOs. I was uh, structuring uh, foreign exchange and, and uh, interest rate derivatives. Mm -hmm. um, and then our third co-founder, um, he was a machine learning engineer from Apple. So um, while he was at Apple, he already has started getting involved in and trading uh, crypto and creating zone bots. So at the time, 2017, we saw that space was really exciting, uh, really picking up. And this was before the kind of ICO kind of boom. Mm -hmm. uh, we decided to get together and, and kind of uh, uh, get involved in this market. So what would you say is the are the primary differences between Hummingbot and your competitors? Sure. Uh, so there's, there's kind of two angles. So I guess one is the, crypt, the, the bot side. So mm -hmm. our bot is open source. So a lot of folks will just run it locally. 
on our computers um, versus other ones which are more like uh, uh, custodial. So they'll, they'll take they'll, they'll do the the trading um, by holding uh, customers' assets or their API keys. So for us, it's kind of we want to make open source so anyone can use it. Uh, they can use it. Uh, and and one other thing we focus on is really trying to develop it as an open source community and project. So encourage users to kind of customize it and develop on it and build on top of it. So we, we're kind of focused more on building kind of a base layer infrastructure that, that mm -hmm. people can use to trade. So I know like even us when we were doing our funds, uh, the, what traders and uh, fund managers want to do, they want to focus on their strategy. They don't mm -hmm. necessarily want to focus on the technicalities of integrating to different exchanges and having exchange errors and all, all these things. So we've kind of made it so that um, folks can focus on their strategies, but also we wanted to, we've also spent a lot of time making it really developer friendly. So we know in our community, there are other exchanges who want to get integrated with us. So they're developing their own exchanges. And I think uh, they're developing their own exchange connectors. So one of the things with us is we really wanted to promote that and have it grow as more open source community rather than um, just just a, just a closed source a service to, to users. Uh, so that's kind of the trading bot side. I guess so flipping things to the liquidity mining side. Mm -hmm. So right now um, for liquidity mining, our platform is we operate on centralized exchanges. So mm -hmm. as far as we know, we're the only ones doing this on centralized exchanges. Uh, our competitors, if you will, are probably the, the AMMs, so the, the decentralized uh, protocols. So the, the likes of Uniswap and Balancer. Um, I think the biggest difference, obviously one is um, make, uh, some token issuers are not on say the Ethereum blockchain or they don't have automated market makers that can do this. Mm -hmm. So we're, as us uh, for centralized exchanges, we are enabling this for the traditional form of trading. So through order books um, and also because we can serve serve any any issuer listed on a centralized exchange, uh, we can apply this to more than just the folks who have like native tokens say on Ethereum. So I'm hearing a lot about free and open source software from you. What is y'all's business model? <laughs> sure. Sure, that's a good question. We get asked that quite a lot, I think. So we actually have a, num a number of uh, it, revenue streams. Uh, so mm -hmm. one is with some of the exchanges that we've partnered with, uh, that we've integrated with, we have a trading revenue fee share. Mm -hmm. So for any, if any users of Hanbot say they trade on Binance and generate uh, revenue for uh, trading fees on Binance, Binance will pay us a portion of that fees to us to help support our project. Oh, okay. So that's kind of, yeah, that's kind of like the first revenue stream Another one is we've been uh, working, collaborating with a, a number of different protocols um, and, and projects. So they'll provide us development grants to help build on top of their infrastructure. So uh, for example, we did something with Celo. We created a custom strategy that allows um, folks to arb their automated market maker on their protocol with other any other exchange we're listening to. We also, in the past, we've partner with uh, Zero X, and we're also in the process of, of, of building out an integration with Balancer. So we have a number of these partnerships that we're working with. So we generate revenue from that way because they give us grants. And then the third way we generate revenue is from our humming miners liquidity mining platform. So in order for exchanges, uh, so for exchanges or token issuers mm -hmm. who want to run liquidity mining campaigns on our platform, they actually pay us a platform fee so that we manage that and set it up for them. Mm -hmm. So then um, I'm remembering one of the demonstrations of how your bot works. And I'm remembering that it involves using the command line. Do you think that anybody who isn't pretty familiar with how command line works has any chance whatsoever at using your product? Sure, yeah, uh, good question. Um, so we definitely made it as easy as possible. Um, so I think uh, for someone who gets gets started, it's a bit daunting, but uh, they, they shouldn't be scared of the command line. So how it works is for um, basically when configuring strategies, uh, uh, it's we have a step-by-step -step process. So basically you'll be prompted questions. So things oh. like very basic uh, parameters to set. So for example, like which exchange you wanna trade on, which trading pair you wanna uh, trade, on, uh, trade Mm -hmm. And also like pricing parameters like or, or sizes. So, how, how like what size orders you want to make? Um, what spreads you want to ask? And it's 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 uh, it, there's a walkthrough, so you can go step oh. by step. Mm -hmm. um, but it, for that, but even so, like if, if users still are having problems, we have a really good support team. So we actually put a lot of effort to to building a, a really strong, solid support team, and they're more than happy to help help users walk through 
their configurations. Um, so that's on our Discord, uh, and it's, they're available 24-7. Uh, so uh, that's a really good resource for anyone who's having issues or just wants to, to get help uh, uh, setting it up. Got it. Well, I think, Carlo, that that just leaves me with one final question, which is why did y'all at Hummingbot decide to join the Dash FastPass network? Sure, that, that's a good question. I think uh, so. there's kind of two 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 points uh, why we thought it made a lot of sense. Mm -hmm. So we've actually uh, known Dash for quite a while. I think uh, so Ryan is a big, big, big supporter. I, I, and, um, and we know like folks from the Dash community are also using Hummingbot. So I guess the, why we thought it made sense to partner is one is a lot of our, uh, our well, two of our basic our, our fundamental strategies, so arbitrage and cost exchange market making, uh, require trading across multiple venues, uh, and this is very common a common strategy just generally in trading crypto, but as well in finance. So mm -hmm. how do you how do you take advantage of trading opportunities? One problem in the crypto space is transferring assets from one venue to another one. Take some time, so you need some, right. you know, you need some bot confirmations. Um, so that really closes off a lot of some arbitrage opportunities because even if one's presented, it just may may take time to move assets to that exchange and then to trade. So mm -hmm. by using Dash in consent, so that really adds another dimension to our strategy. So that allows us to transfer assets to different exchanges where there could be a trading opportunity. So we think that really adds another tool in the toolkit. In terms of like how we can build up these these arbitrage and cost exchange market making strategies, so we thought that would be really neat and something for us to cooperate. Uh, and the other thing is, um, we thought that was great about the FastPass network is we, we um, are we have made some initiatives on kind of educating our users. So we rolled out a series of blogs called Hummingbot Academy. So what that does is it intends to educate folks, um, not necessarily specifically just about Hummingbot, but just generally about trading, uh, market making, uh, a lot of uh, fundamental like risk management concepts. Um, so what we really like about FastPass is there's also a big push on educating users on trading, um, also like learning more about you know the Dash technology and, and instance and like benefits, how you can use that. So we thought that working together really complements, it's complementary in terms of getting our message and education out, out to folks in our community and in Dash's community. Got it, makes perfect sense. Well, that's all my questions for today, Carlo. Thanks so much for joining me. Thanks for having me. All right. And I will see you next time. Bye now.